This episode is divided into three parts. The first will be called Bats and You. The second part will be about their immune system. And lastly, we'll learn about monitoring bats and what we might learn from them. So, what do bats have to do with you? Do you like bananas? Or guava? How about mango? Well, you can make bats for all of these. Bats pollinate these fruits and over 300 other varieties. So you can thank bats for that. Here are some bats that I saw at the University of Florida, and these actually exclusively only eat fruit. Some people call them sky puppies. And on this one, you watch the view. A bat that comes in on the bright in a moment, and you're gonna see a bat poop. So if you haven't seen anyone poop before, there, there it was. And speaking of their poop, which is known as guano, you can actually buy bat guano or on Amazon. It makes a great fertilizer. It's very popular uh, in the cannabis growing and other, other uh, domains. So that is a bad one. Oh, do you hear that? That's a mosquito. Bats eat, bats eat tons of mosquitoes. They can eat over a thousand mosquitoes in a, in a night. They'll essentially eat their body weight. Uh, so it's, they do amazing natural pest control for us. So again, you can think bats if you don't like uh, things like that. But maybe you thought of Dracula, right? Or maybe you thought of a good bat. <laughs> so that's been part of our pop culture. But it, even going back in history, been part of uh, many cultures. In some Asian cultures, for example, bats are actually known uh, for their good fortune. Speaking of good fortune, they have a, they've been blessed with an incredible immune system. Let's talk a little about that. So uh, these are bats that I uh, also saw at the University of Florida, but a different species. You're going to see tons of little bats flying. And the reason I'm showing you them flying is they are the only mammals capable of true flight. And as they're flying, their bodies are going through an incredible temperature change. These little bats here, which uh, beautiful, feel the night sky, they will go from a resting state of 50 degrees Fahrenheit up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit while they're in flight. And they're gonna fly for a few hours before they come back to roost. So this is part of their incredible immune system. It's why scientists theorize they're able to fend off and live with viruses, whether it's SARS, MERS, coronaviruses, Ebola, they can live with them and not get sick with them. So they have an incredible immune system. Now, scientists also made an important discovery by putting little wireless sensors on them, called like a backpack here. And what they found is, they, in, we're looking at two sets of bats here. The blue bats are normal, healthy bats. And you can see they love to cluster together, right? Bats are really social, they love to be together. The red bat was injected with a solution that made it sick. And so what they found, time after time again, is that the sick bat will always move itself away from the main cluster. So, what does that mean? at social distance. They've, done, they've been doing it for millions of years and it might explain why they are so healthy. Some little bats can actually live over 40 years. So that brings us to monitoring bats. The idea being, if we can detect a sick bat, right, if their incredible immune systems can be overcome by something, and we can detect that, that might give us a leg up, an early warning for the next pandemic. So how do we monitor bats today? Well, the most popular way is via acoustics. Bats use spectral location to navigate, and if you use an ultrasound detector, this is what you would hear slowed down to our human uh, range of frequency. You'd hear something like that. The other way of collecting bat data is to go to the cage, right? And you can see it is not an easy process, right? The cages are, are far, often in very uh, remote and very inaccessible areas. Once they do get up there, what they'll do at the cave entrance is they'll put a net up, like so. And then they simply need to wait until the bats fly out at night. Oh, no. <laughs> one of these bats. And what they'll do is they will do a wing punch on them and a blood sample and take that back to the lab. But it's a really laborious process to go all the way 
out of the field like that. What's that that guy got down right there? Okay, now it's time for our commercial break, but after that, we'll be going inside of the newly discovered Jacob's Caverns. So, don't go away. Do you have bats in your house? <laughs> Should you use a broomstick to shoo them away? Should you pick them up and take them outside? <laughs> what you need is to call bat busters. Bats are an important species that eat insects and pollinate our flowers. Our trained professionals will help you safely relocate bats. Here's how. First, we patch up any tiny gaps around your house to prevent new bats from entering. Then, we install a one-way exit belt. Bats can leave, but can't come back in. Finally, we'll help you install a bat house. It's like a birdhouse, but for bats. Don't delay. Call Bat Busters today. All right, welcome back to Wild Planet. We're now inside the newly discovered Jacob's Cavern. And indeed, here we do have some bats. And we have to be a little bit quiet here because uh, we don't want to disturb them. That's part of the problem with those sending people into the caves to disturb them. So what we're here to check out is a brand new monitoring device. And this is called Pat Babble. So the way this works is it's a thermal monitoring camera. So if I bring the camera a little closer, this little unit here is actually rotating moving up and down. What it's doing is it's looking at the bats. So let's look at the bats here again. We see a, a kind of cluster here and a small one. I'm now going to go into the live view inside the bat babble. And this is what we're seeing. So we're just, with thermal imaging, again, remember how hot those bats get even in their resting state. It's very easy to see what the bats are doing. So that's how bat babble works. And you might be wondering, where does it get its power source? How does it communicate with the outside world? Well, all we need to do is follow this kind of green light here. This is an umbilical cord. It runs all the way out to the entrance of the cave. So let me go out to here. And from the entrance of the cave, this is where all the power systems are stored, the communication makes it much more accessible and easy uh, to navigate with. So that is the bat battle system in a nutshell. Uh, it's a system for monitoring bats that gives us early warning system into the next and future pandemic. So, why does this matter? Well, there are tons of caves that have bats in them, all around the world, and they need to be monitored. We're only monitoring a fraction of them today. So in the future, imagine a system like Babel, that Babel just installed all over in caves. It can give us an immediate indicator that, hey, there might be something unusual going, in that, uh, going on in that cave, and then we can dispatch a team to go out and check out what's going on. So with this, we can monitor bats to save the world. That's all the time we have for this episode today. Tune in next week for slots. Thank you very much. <laughs>